Hey everyone, this is Wes from the Console Gaming Crew and we couldn't be happier to announce that we are now part of the Boss Rush Podcast Network and are featured on BossRushGames.com. BossRushGames.com is a great place where you can find up-to-date news articles, blogs, and podcasts about video games. In addition to that, there is a growing collection of podcasts in not just the gaming community, but other communities as well. We are honored to be a part of such a great network of podcasters, so please stop by and give everyone a listen. Thank you. And enjoy the show. Yo, crew members, what it be? Howdy, duty. Hi, that was fucking weird. Right, duty. I don't even see why. What? Yo, I gotta ask this question. Right, this man done got LASIK, and he's over here wearing glasses. <laughs> oh my God. His eyes took a 360. They're no, not. We're going to unfuck ourselves and just shove ourselves fucking backwards. Is that what these happens? glasses? Like, what's going on with your face? No, no. These glasses are not for reading to help with my oh, is this sleep like issues. Blue stuff? The blue blockers for when I'm staring at screens to help help me a little bit. How's that? How's that? How's it feel having glasses back on your face after you've had them off for a couple of years? Well, not bad because I still wear sunglasses when I drive. It's bright out, so it's not like I've mm-hmm. gone from don't nothing to up. something. Don't agree with him, Shut the fuck up. It's different. <laughs> Sorry. I don't agree. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> what do we got today, Andy? <laughs> going back in, uh, back in time, brother. We're going back in time for little consoles through history. Because yeah. we have, you know, the last one we did, we got super excited because uh, we are now officially in the golden age of gaming. Yeah, where where all the really fun stuff starts to happen, you know, a lot of the a lot of the systems that most people, you know, recognize, you know, all the all the shit that we did is a lot of that obscure stuff that a lot of people may not have known about the you know the brown box and you know yeah. the Mattel and television and the Astrocade and all that stuff. Now we're getting into your NESs and Segas and shit like that. But before we get all that, we got to start with the Coleco Vision. Yeah. That's where we're yes, at today. Sir. The Coleco Vision. Any guesses who manufactured the thing? Oh, wasn't that? It was the Vision Company, right? <laughs> <laughs> if you're thinking of Coleco, you'd be correct. No, I said what I said. Yeah, Coleco is <laughs> I was the wrong. company. But be abs- you- wasn't it? The- it's the predecessor to... Um... Oh. No, the Coleco is legit the manufacturer. Oh, oh, is it-, oh it wasn't a trick question. <laughs> I know what Anthony's going for, though. Telstar Series well, is the predecessor. 1978. Yeah, yeah Coleco Telstar. Yep. Um, the Coleco, uh, sorry, Coleco, I almost said the Coleco Telstar. Coleco Vision released all the way back in August of 1982 in North America. July of 1983 in Europe, but August of 1982. Wes, I'm sure you got some banging things that happened in 1982 that are just going to blow our fucking minds, right? So I'm going to start it off with how much this thing cost in 1982. So this thing cost one hundred seventy-five dollars in nineteen eighty-two. What's that in today's money? I always ask you. I know, and I love having <laughs> it for you. Four hundred eighty-four dollars and ninety-three cents. Yeah, I would never pay that today for that thing. Actually, oh. a little. Did you use the same website you normally use, Paypal. or did you use an article? Did you use an article? No, I did. I used um. I used something different for um for pulling this one up. Oh, weird. Because I I used the. It's funny if the if the websites are different then because I used like a price calculator mm-hmm. to to. Like adjust for I mean, inflation for 2021. Did, yeah. We're <laughs> not far off. I got. We're not far off. I got 495 bucks. So let's talk about 1982 a little bit. How much did y'all born. think a gallon of gas cost in 1982? 97 cents. And even that might be a stretch. Andy, what did you say? Not, hey, you said 97. 97. It's. I, I'm pretty sure it's even less than that. I, I honestly, it's probably um, like 78, 79 cents. I'm gonna say. 86. Ooh. Well, it was 91. Oh, wow. So my first guess was actually close. You know, it's, that, I, I'm what's fucked up is that was going to be my first guess after you said 97. I was going to go 91, but I was like, no, no, I'll go in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> A loaf of bread cost 50 cents. I was about to say it was free. <laughs> uh, let's see here. An outdoor gas grill cost $200. Uh, that's, oh, actually, God. that's kind of expensive. Yeah, because I mean, if you think about it, if, if one seventy five is almost five hundred now, yeah, you know, what I mean, outdoor grill, yeah, that's kind for of two hundred. That's yeah, that's pretty high. Yeah, and all they um, had were those old school like spaceship looking ones too. Them old charcoal grills. Yeah, boy, UFOs. 
Um, what was it? What was I say? Oh yeah, U.S. postage stamp was twenty cents. Jesus Christ! Oh, the bright arts. <laughs> and the average cost of a new house, hundred and five thousand dollars. That's my guess. Hmm. That's tough because I don't know what we're talking about here. Nineteen. You talking about a two bedroom house, three bedroom house, one bedroom he said house? Average cost of the basically an average cost of the average American cost home. Of, yeah. There's no like so many bedroom this that and the third. The average cost ninety five thousand. He said ninety five. What's that? He said ninety five thousand. Ninety ninety five. Nope. Eighty two thousand two hundred. Oh, oh my god! Could you imagine spending? My house would be paid off. <clears throat> I know, right? How long did it take dude, you to pay off your house? Two years. <laughs> I mean, dude, yo, the average monthly rent was three hundred twenty dollars a month. So, oh my god, what do you think now that's a car payment, and that's a, like that's like a cheap that's a car payment per month. Yeah, that's a cheapy mm-hmm. used car payment. That's insane. <laughs> you can you can't get a shitty one bedroom apartment. No, nope. for, for less under than a grand. No, no. Yeah, well, I mean, you can if you really don't care about where you live. <laughs> but I kind of do. If you care about your life, then yeah, you're talking about under a grand. It's not happening. Insane. So, some other stuff that happened in 1982. We got Michael Jackson's groundbreaking album Thriller oh. was released in November of that year. Oh, that's fucking insane. Billy Jean, Beat It, Human Nature, PYT, Want to Be Starting Something. Like, yo, come on. That's some good stuff. Uh, some other stuff that happened. Argentina invaded the Falcon Islands. Mm. Jeez. The Falcon Island War. Aggression. No need for it. Very much so. Very much so. And the first episode of Late Night with David Letterman aired in February of 1982. Hmm. Um, some films that came out. I mean, E.T. was probably the biggest one that debuted. Uh, let's see. What else happened? Uh, da, 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 da. I did go through this earlier. I have no idea why. I'm... The first issue of USA Today was published. I found that interesting. Huh. I didn't. Re- I, thought I thought it was, it was older than that. I was just gonna say that. I always thought it was yeah. a lot older than 1982. So, Wesley, it's almost the same. How old are you? You're like what, going on 60? <laughs> Close. <laughs> Close. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you, but you would think Andy was going on 60 because you look great. He looks like shit. I mean, look, <laughs> I gotta, I gotta. This dude, this dude, literally looks like he's dressed up in grandma's rags with a bald ass head. <laughs> Like, I don't know what the fuck's... Like, I'm having a hard time looking at him. (laughs) Hey, I decided to just let the hair go gracefully. Anthony's still trying to hang on. That's the difference. (laughs) Yeah, but even if I let it go gracefully, I still have some. I have a lot more than you. So do I I if I don't shave it. Oh. And one of the last things I want to say (laughs) is that the Experimental Community of Tomorrow opened in 1982. Disney futuristic park that we all like to call Epcot. Yeah. Ooh, Epcot Park, yep. I thought that was older as well. <sighs> but yeah, we got man, anything that's... else? Are we good? Nah, man, I think we're good. You know, I, mean, I think we hit you know, we hit all the big, big stuff. Anyone got the specs on this thing? What do you want to know? I can't. Just, I... You know, in memory, shit okay, like, it's just so... the, the basic stuff. Nothing. I'm not not nothing like the crazy name of the GPU and all that shit. <laughs> I think it's necessary. Um, okay. Well, so the media style was a ROM cartridge. Um, CPU, like you said, we're not gonna mm-hmm. worry about. Um, memory, one KB scratch pad RAM, sixteen KB video RAM, and eight KB of ROM. I was about to say. Um, I noticed that this one had <laughs> multiple. You know what I mean like you mean multiple um like space sizes. I'm actually really you know excited mean, like, to talk like the to you about uh, not so much because I do like remember I do the innovation and har- innovations and hardware. I'm really excited to talk about some of the stuff that goes along with this console. I was really when I read this, I was like, no shit, that that was a thing. So yeah, dude, I love that, dude. I yeah. I love jumping into this one, man. This one, yeah, it was, this it was one's pretty cool. cool. Um, man, well, so, school. Why don't you give us some of the history? I will give you a little bit of the history. So Coleco entered the video game market in 76. We talked about this console with the Telstar. Yep. Uh, when that market then became oversaturated over the next few years, the company nearly went bankrupt, but, f- uh, but found a successful product through handheld electronic games, um, which beat out those of the current market leader, Mattel, which is pretty impressive. 
Uh, the company also developed a line of miniaturized tabletop arcade video games with licensed rights from arcade game makers, including Sega, Bally, Midway, and Nintendo, the, all big players. Uh, they were able to survive on the sales of their electronic games uh, through to 1982, but the market itself began to wane. And, excuse me, um, they were still interested in producing a home video game console. So, according to the lead engineer at ColecoVision, um, the president wanted to get into the programmable home console market with arcade quality games, but the cost of components had been a limiting factor. As of 79, they had drawn out specs for a system using Texas Instruments video and a General Instruments audio chip, but could not get the go-ahead due to the cost of RAM. Um, but luckily, uh, lucky, luckily, luckily for luckily. them, around 1981, there was an article in the Wall Street Journal that asserted that the price of RAM had fallen, and after working the numbers, they found the system cost fell within the margins. Within 10 minutes of reporting, they established the working name ColecoVision for the consoles. They began a more thorough design which the marketing department was never able to surpass. This is what's interesting right here, is they they pretty much had like a, I, th I think it was with Nintendo, they kind of had a bidding war over Donkey Kong, which would turn out to be a very worthwhile purchase because Donkey Kong is still a household. Absolutely. Uh, Coleco, re Coleco recognized that licensed uh, conversion of arcade conversions had worked for Atari in selling the VCS, so they approached Nintendo around 1981 for potential access to their arcade titles. They described a tense set of meetings with Nintendo's president, Hiroshi Yamuchi, under typical Japanese customs where he sought to negotiate for game rights. Although the dude only seemed to offer like these really obscure titles. You know, he wanted to hold on to his bread and butter just in case. After a meal during one day, Bromley excused himself to the restroom and ended up walking into one of the Donkey Kong cabinets, which had yet to be released in Western countries. Feeling the game would likely be a hit, he arranged a meeting the following day and requested the exclusive rights to Donkey Kong. And uh, Yamuchi, uh, Yamauchi, sorry, Yamauchi offered them if only they could provide $200,000 up front that day and give them $2 per unit sold. So he's like, you can get this thing, but I'm still making money off it. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Um, they agreed. Um, the rest is kind of history, but... Um, that was awkward. the ColecoVision was released in 82, so, uh, selling more than 500,000 units, partly, uh, you know, basically on the back of Donkey Kong. <laughs> yeah, but dude, uh, think, think about it though. You're talking about August to Christmas, right? So August to December selling 500,000 units, half a million. And yeah. then very quickly they made it to that million mark in early 83. I know I'm kind of taking your thunder a little bit from what you're saying. No, no, you're, no, you're fine. No, you're absolutely fine. I mean, fine. at the end of this whole thing, by the time it was all said and done with the Coleco, you're talking about just under about 2 million consoles sold. Into which every single one had Donkey Kong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now just <clears throat> now just imagine, you know, we talk about, you know, how one minor thing can change and the whole game changes. Imagine if that meeting never happens. Imagine if the dude never walks to the bathroom. Imagine if that dude never sees that Donkey Kong cabinet just chilling there before it hit the market on its own. True. May never even have this system. Or you'd have the system, but maybe we wouldn't even be talking it probably, about it. We wouldn't be talking about it. It probably doesn't sell 500,000 units. And the didn't end up being... Months, it's, yeah. did, didn't end up... I don't do this part. I know you guys got it covered. It didn't end up being their only big game. There's definitely some big games for this console. Um... But uh, believe it or not, the biggest. Yeah, I was just saying. We'll go over some of the games that. But actually it's not the only big some one. Of the hardware. Uh, when we get into that portion of the cast. But yeah, do it up. But yeah, that's. I mean, that's. Which I think is actually me right now. Okay, so really quick, a little bit of the hardware and the innovations when it comes to the ColecoVision. Uh, ColecoVision consoles at uh, all first-party cartridges and most third-party software titles features a 12.7-second pause before presenting the game. Select screen. Uh, CBS Electronics, uh, which actually is the company that um, was uh, – who actually released them outside of the United States um, – Still was ColecoVision, but it was it was under CVS, uh, CBS, sorry, um, CBS Electronics. They reduced that pause second, uh, they reduced that pause from twelve point seven to three point three uh, for the ColecoVision consoles. Uh, so Damn. yeah, pretty crazy at the time. Yeah, so there are uh, 
a lot of expansion modules and accessories for the ColecoVision itself. Uh, Coleco touted the ColecoVision's hardware expandability by highlighting the expansion module interface on the front of the unit. These hardware expansion modules and accessories were sold separately. The first expansion module was the ColecoVision um atari 6 uh, 2600 expansion basically you could take the it was a it was a plug and play into the ColecoVision where you could actually plug in atari 2600 cartridges and the controllers themselves um it was actually said at the time that the uh the 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 expansion module number one was uh was basically uh the first first of its kind to be like a, a knockoff um being able to plug in a completely different company's cartridges at that time, uh, which I thought was actually really that's, neat. That's nuts. yeah, and that's and that's definitely that's definitely an innovation. It's kind of like the very almost in a way it's called like, almost like the very first emulator pretty much and it, it even <laughs> but, says right yeah. here it says the expansion module uh functionally gave the ColecoVision the largest software library of any console of its day. So that's pretty neat. Uh, expansion module number two was called the driving controller. Uh, the, the driving controller was a steering wheel and a gas pedal that came in a package with a cartridge of the game Turbo. Uh, the gas pedal is oh. the gas pedal is merely a simple on and off switch. Although Coleco called it the driving controller an expansion module, it was actually plugged. It actually plugged into the controller port, unlike the expansion module interface. Um, you could also use the steering wheel. And gas pedal with other games such as Destructor, Bump and Jump, Pit Stop, and the Dukes of Hazard. Um, there's another one, the expansion module number three, which was the Adams Computer uh, expansion, which uh, basically it plugged into the expansion uh, module, uh, turned the ColecoVision into an Adams computer, which was complete with a keyboard, digital data pack, cassette drive, and 64 KB RAM, and a printer. Ooh, Damn. printer. It's funny. I was on Yo, TikTok I... the other day and yeah. I saw um somebody had something on there about like you remember the old school printers? They go, mm, 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 Yeah, mm, yeah, of course. So when I Who when I worked at Marcone, when... we used one of those all oh, the way yeah, up. Yeah, that's right. We used one of those um shit all the way up until like 2017, 2018. Yeah. Fucking Yeah, dude. Yo, yo that just it, you know, it just takes me back to like sitting in my grandfather's office in his house. Yeah. Yeah, like, dude, I just love that sound. But um, uh, I, uh, I also really quick wanted to talk about that game Turbo. So I the I game... look it up. Is that the same Turbo that they talked about in Wreck It Ralph? <laughs> you know something? It probably is. So the cabinet for it in an arcade, it looks a it. lot like um yeah, yeah, that dude, that's why I did. So the cabinet looks a lot like what you would expect for like just normal raising games. You mean just the overtop cabinet? So and... it is. Okay. I mean it doesn't say it in here, but if you if it if you look at the cabinet from the side, just like you said, um, it looks almost exactly like the one that that was portrayed in the uh, Wreck It Ralph in the Wreck It Ralph movie. Yeah. Okay. Well, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be the first from Coleco in that movie, right? Because one of the games for Coleco, de the Coleco Vision definitely has a character in Wreck It Ralph for sure. Well, uh, yeah. So here's the thing. So the developer of Turbo themselves is actually Sega. Uh, and if you yes. look at Wreck It Ralph, look at the games that are mm -hmm. in there from Sega. You have Sonic was in there floating around. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it wouldn't surprise me if the game Turbo itself yeah. is the same adaptation from <clears throat> Wreck It Ralph. Uh, yeah. Which Bef before you, yes. oh, go ahead. no, go ahead. I was going to say before you continue, I wanted to backtrack a minute to the thing you were talking about with being able to play the Atari, the Atari games. Yes. Unless you guys know otherwise, is that not the only system? around where you can play another company's games like another like you that, that'd be like the equivalent of finding a way to be able to put a playstation game into an xbox you yeah, know what i mean, mean? basically at this to so like we have like we've had we've had companies where like a nintendo system i forget which one like a a 64 or, or one of their systems had like a, a port they came out with where you could play other nintendo gamecube console games gamecube right and but it's Wii not like nintendo it was it's not like Nintendo was playing Sega Genesis's games or you right. know like the actual cartridge. So that's what Nintendo, I'm trying to figure. That's what I'm wondering. Nintendo playing yeah. Nintendo games. So this was yeah. like this was completely insane at the time. Uh, yeah. On top of that, though, I didn't touch base on this, but I will since you brought that up. Uh, the expansion mo module 
for the Atari 2600 prompted legal action from Atari. Coleco and Atari settled outside of court, uh, with Coleco becoming licensed under Atari's patents at the time. The royal, uh, royalty-based license also applied to Coleco's Gemini Gaming system and standalone clone of the 2600 so atari did say f you uh give us our monies and so (laughs) but still at the end of the day dude it's literally the first it's literally like the first company that basically built a clone yeah so you could so or uh, a style of clone that literally plugged into their own shit so you could play another company's games you could literally buy one system and the expansion and then if you had an atari or say your atari broke you could still play every game that was still exactly still available in your library that's insane it's insane it's so cool uh what else do we have we had the roller controller quick. yes Sorry, I know we just keep on backtracking Mother on stuff F. you said. I know I I'm an asshole. A roll, Anthony's asshole. got the in- the interesting part. That's why. So yeah, I have the with tur- part. So, yeah. So, but the wild thing about Turbo. So I, I'm still on that for a second. Oh my God. It was the it, dude. It was the top grossing arcade game uh-huh. in '82. Uh-huh. It actually beat Donkey Kong in '82. Fun fact: they're both in the click of crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I just found that dude, you know you're winning when you're just beating yourself at that point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the roller controller is a trackball that came packaged with the cartridge Slither, a conversion of the arcade game. Wes, you say you seem like you're on a roll of fucking me up, so why don't you look up Slither, the arcade <laughs> game? I will. And then we'll backtrack to that in a little bit. Uh, Slither, the arcade game. The roller controller uses a special power connector that is not. You smile every time you say roller controller. I know, I, dude. I fucking. <laughs> He's like, like having so much fun saying it every time I fucking <laughs> say it. Uh, the power connector that is, it is not compatible with the expansion module number three, which is the Adams computer. Coleco mailed an adapter to owners of both units who complained. The other cartridge programmed to use the roller controller is Victory, a joystick mode switch on the roller controller jesus christ allows it to be used with all cartridges <laughs> including war games like omega race and atari's soft centipede did you say omega raisin omega race 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 <laughs> got it the fucking yeah, roller so you controller hit it what a fucking name so slither is a similar nature to the hit arcade game centipede yeah just like you said man. yeah and and you control a snake yep <laughs> nope, 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 nope. Oh, we got, you. We got fight for it. Fight for it. We got Mum Mum Andy over here fucking giggling. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, such a good cast so far. Uh, I, I do have it. one thing that I wanted. I didn't. So this one I did not read. So I'm going to read the whole thing really quick. Stick with me if you can. This is unreleased. Expansion module number three was originally the Super Game module. It was advertised for an August 1983 release, but was ultimately canceled and replaced with the Adams Computer expansion. Uh, the Super Game mod, uh, module added a tape drive known as the Extraction Stingray Floppy with 128 KB capacity and the additional RAM said to be 30 KB to load and execute programs from tape. Uh, games could be distributed on tiny tapes called wafers and be much larger than 16 KB or 32 KB ROM uh, cartridges of the day. Super Donkey Kong with all screens and animations, Super Donkey Kong Jr. and Super Smurf Rescue were demonstrated with the Super Game module. Uh, the Adams expansion uh, was its 256 KB tape drive and 64 KB RAM fulfilled with the specifications promised by the Super Game module. So basically, they had an expansion module number three that was supposed to be some kind of like fucking module on steroids. It was like super fucking. Well, it says it's Super Game module, so <laughs> it's the name that I have for my wiener, Dexatron Stingray Floppy. <laughs> Look, it is what it is. I expect nothing less from Mama, w- Mama Mandy. She said Mama, said Wendy. Mama Wendy. <laughs> Mama Wendy. Because she texted me last night saying, make sure you give Sophia a big hug and kiss for Mama Wendy. And I said, okay. I was actually and actually, I forgot to text cause... her back. Okay. I said, okay, in my head. and never texted her back. I I've done that. Sleep. I've done that to people a million Which times. Me, they message me and I answer tomorrow. out loud. Text back like, hey, I got your message. I fell asleep. I didn't forget about you. I'm sorry. I was too busy calling your son, mom, <laughs> I, Andy, I actually, Wendy. 
I actually answered you. I just I answered you out loud. I did. I and you like, my head. oh yeah, that happens a lot. I do that too. Dude, I think I do that to Wes probably more than anybody. So <laughs> no, bro, so there's probably bullshit. so many times where Look, there's probably, there's you probably, do probably that so many times Wes messages us. me. Nah, dog, you do that shit to both of us. We'll be in our <laughs> group message, be like, blah, 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 texting back and forth, and, and be like. Yeah, I told you. I'll be like, and we scroll back. Like, no, motherfucker, you didn't say shit. Say shit. You ain't say <laughs> shit. You're just like, I did. I oh, spoke yeah, it into, I I spoke it into the ether. Yeah, yeah, that you did, dog. Uh, I am done with my <laughs> portion now. So, uh, yeah, what are we on to now? So I can start. I, I can start uh, spitting out some of the games that were on this thing. Oh, yeah, spit, bro. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> sound like my son with a fucking toddler all the time. Jesus. Yeah. I hear you on that. So some of the games that were on here, um, you had Pitfall, Pitfall Two, Lost Caverns. You had Qbert, which is another um character that we saw in Record Ralph. That's what I was alluding to when I said it earlier. I just didn't want to spoil it. You had Rocky Super Action Boxing, um, and that was actually made by Coleco too. And that was Ro- one Rocky, that had like the Rocky overlays Rockies? for yeah overlays for Super Action controllers. <clears throat> so. I was looking at that with one of the with one of the sets of controllers that you had. Yeah, they come as a pair, and they're the super action controllers. Yeah, dude, it it, it looked a lot like the um, lot like like VR, like like handsets. You know what I mean? God, how easy would a Rocky game have to be? You I know my fucking arms are way hit. too long. If you look, you can't see that I'm fucking raising my arm because it's like ten times <laughs> off the screen. It looks like I'm trying to fucking <laughs> pluck something out of the air. Do you have a list of the games for the Adams exclusives? I actually do. Okay, good. Because I say, if you do not, I have them right here. <laughs> no, yeah, no, I definitely do. Okay, good. Yeah, man, because you had stuff for the uh, for the shared games. You had stuff for the floppy. Yep, and you had Andy's, games for Andy's the ROM. Name. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but I mean, wait until you hear. Wait until you hear some of these games, and I don't know if they're like. Well, anyway, we'll, you'll hear. You'll hear. Well, I mean, we had like Coleco Tennis, Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Jr., Dukes of Hazard, Hero, Pitfall, Qbert. Um, what else do we have? We had Wing War. We had Bounty Hunter, <clears throat> Diablo. Ooh, Diablo. What if that's Dragon's actually- Lair. I wonder if that's like actual Diablo, Diablo. I'm going to click on it right now. You do your thing, and then I'm going to go back to it. Oh, there's not a page being created. <laughs> uh, you had Adventure Pack 1 and 2. You had Castle of Doom. Yeah, you, Like you said, Dragon's Lair. You had Dragon's Cavern, Fathom. Some geometry games because let's face it, something has to be educational. Whether you play it or not, at least it's there. But yeah, dude, like they had they had an insane amount of shit for this for the system when it came down to games. Like excuse me. I love seeing just how just like every console you have such a bigger group of games. Like people kept on going, okay, well let's make a game about this. Let's make something about this. Let's do this. Let's just... and then it just kept on just amalgamating into you know I mean what we have now which is just thousands upon thousands of games that we could just have right at our fingertips fair Man, these late night casts are hitting everybody yeah but there's still a lot of fun. i'm not yawning what you mean <laughs> well i mean yeah, i mean you i mean you going straight granny mode on us yeah i mean you look you look like you you and some kind of weird shit Yo, he look real mad right now, too. Look at this shit. Bro, I'm in a Nickelodeon <laughs> shirt. Yeah, but it looks like it's oversized yeah, and like my mom's size. <laughs> it's, no, that's my size. God, yo, <laughs> so you got he just, Andy. He just said and- you're wearing a muumu. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for that. Andy's He's wearing a muumu. Andy's wearing my mom's size clothes. <laughs> it's my size. <laughs> it's big, big mama's house, baby. <laughs> Dang. Oh, shit. Oh, God. Oh, this man, This it. man's collar is like... It's not like low, but it's like spread out like over his shoulder. He's like showing like a shoulder, like, <laughs> hey guys. Like hey yo, dude, yo, yo, we're talking about nineteen eighty two. That was an eighties look for the you mean for the women back then. You mean with the with the sweatshirt and having the cut off. Thank you for side. noticing. Yeah. Thank you for noticing my commitment to this podcast. Absolute yes. commitment. Yes. Exactly. Thank you. Mum um, Andy. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Love it. Somebody's gotta commit. All right, come on, Mum. What do you got? You normally give when it's been discontinued. Uh nineteen eighty five. Yeah. And how many units sold total? Two million. Which I already said, two million. Oh, two million total. Two, yeah. mi- two million. Two, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is what happens when you listen to the show that you're casting. <laughs> my mom. <laughs> Turn your hearing aid up. Fuck. Fuck. Show more show. Dude, I don't even know. You. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think I, know the Nick... I think I know the name of this podcast now. <laughs> 
This mama episode, mama, show mama, your shoulder. Mama, 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 mama <laughs> oh, I thought it was going to be show your shoulder. I thought it was going to be show more shoulder. <laughs> what we're going to do, show more. I can't even talk right now. Wow, dude. That was, all, that was awful. Well, yo, you've had a lot of S's in this cast yeah. that you've had to say. Yeah. It also has to be mad hard to open your mouth when you have that laying on your upper lip. Like, it's got to be tough. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> There's... <laughs> Lip muscles see how, are see how, right. see how so labored look, his me, mouth is trying level. to get out, let me, bro. Let me give you a little Omega breakdown level. of the fucking human anatomy. <laughs> it's your lower jaw that goes up and down, not your upper <laughs> lip. Shut the fuck up, dude. Jesus Christ. I get it. Go out and buy some more moo-moos. Yeah. How the how the fuck a, did I yo, just get I'm blasted? A, next time how I the fuck? I'm going to buy you some fucking, I'm going to buy you some fucking, like, <laughs> string tops and everything. String tank tops. How the fuck? How on earth did I just get blasted from the one day of school that Anthony paid attention to? <laughs> He's like, How did this happen? The one time I was trying to be really funny, and it didn't work. God, because he had right. to show up in this health class on a Tuesday and heavy. said, "Fuck it, I'm paying attention today." Because I plan on always having oh, a beautiful mustache. Man. Oh God! All right, y'all. So the beholder, I guess. So that's Coleco Vision, man. Jesus. <laughs> um, Andy, what do we have next for uh, consoles through history? Which is the next Ooh, one? We're going to what talk? we have next is the Atari Fifty Two Hundred. Mm. The Atari 5200. And then after that, bro, we are straight into the shit that people know and love. We're into your Segas and NESs and all that good shit. All right. That is definitely going to be a longer episode, that's for sure. Because there's a lot to talk about with those. Yeah. I feel like, well, I feel I mean, like that should be like a, an 8 o'clock cast. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. It might have Probably. to be. Or maybe, even, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. <sighs> all right. So let me go ahead. Let me turn the voice down a little bit. Oh my god! This is Why? Because <laughs> you're showing a lot of shoulder, and you're getting <laughs> excited. And I got I got to let y'all know we can we can connect with us. Well, can, us here at CGC. You can find us on our website at consolegamingcrew.com. <laughs> just connected to our Gmail. Account. How do I still know this shit? I haven't done this shit in months. Because you've been, dude. It this never used to be goes your away, thing, dude. So true. it never goes away. Nah, so, yeah, as Anthony said earlier, you have our website, which is consolegamingcrew.com. You have our email, which is consolegamingcrew at gmail.com. Our Twitter is at consolecrew, and it's probably the fastest place that will reply to you. I mean, easiest one for us to get to you. YouTube and Instagram are both consolegamingcrew. Facebook is a piece of shit, like I keep on saying, and I do not lie. And if you want to check out anybody else that does, you know, talks about PCs, talks about cosplay, talks about just... Anything else that's console or gaming or entertainment related, it's not us. Check out that, yeah, yeah, it's not us. Go to bossrushgames.com. The Boss Rush Network is exactly where you want to go to find all of that stuff, man. Hey, be better, hey Andy. Bossrushgames.com. Was that like a jar of peanut butter? <laughs> No, <laughs> like, what the fuck? What the I'll, ex- I'll, I'll show you when we're done. You talking about that with the green cap on it? No, is yeah. that a green cap or a yellow cap? No, it's green. green. Um, you can also check us out on our Twitch, which is CGC Podcast. Monday nights, you have myself. Currently, we've been doing um, It Takes Two. Hob and I are trying to finish that up. I think we're almost done with it, actually. And then Friday nights, we've been kicking some chill and shit like that. So definitely come check us out see what we got. And throw us them five stars oh, everywhere you can. Anywhere you listen to podcasts, please. Yeah, <clears throat> so good. So until next time. It's been chaotic, but still, we want y'all to stay safe, wash your hands, mask up if you need to, and as always, game on. And show less shoulder. Game on. (laughs) (laughs) Pet a turtle. Game on, y'all. Be good. Peace.